Our next step is to configure the drive using the ST Configurator software that we downloaded and installed on our PC. I have the IP address switch of my drive set for 192.168.0.130. Let's make sure the software matches. Now I see we're already set for Ethernet, but the IP address isn't the same. I'll need to change the last octet to 130. Let's go to the drive menu and ping the drive to make sure that everything is connected and communicating properly. Drive responded. We're good to go. Now, let's hit the upload button and see what's in the drive now. I see that our drive is an ST10Q with firmware version 1.05a. The motor is an HT17075. That doesn't match the motor I'm using. I also see that the control mode is set for pulse and direction. We'll need to change that to cue programming. First I'm going to change the motor. You can do that by clicking here in the summary sidebar where it says motor or over here on the motor icon. I'm using a standard applied motion motor so it should be on my list. And indeed there it is, HT17068. One more thing while I'm in the uh, motor dialog, I need to set the rotor inertia. These drives contain a very sophisticated anti-resonance and electronic damping algorithm. And that requires a motor model to be running inside the DSP chip. The one thing that that motor model can't figure out on its own is how much uh, load inertia is connected externally. Well, I don't have anything connected to my motor, so that would be 0x rotor inertia. Next, I'm going to go to the Motion menu and select Q Program. My Power Up Command mode is going to be 21, point-to-point -point positioning. That'll be fine for what we're doing. Click OK, and then Download to Drive. OK, our drive is now configured. Now it's time to do a little queue programming. I have an ST10Q drive connected to a power supply and to a motor and of course to the Ethernet network. I also have a push button switch wired to input 5. When I press the switch, the input will go low. We can use that to trigger our queue program. But first, let's make sure the communication is set up properly. Now we know we'll be communicating on Ethernet, so in the communication frame, let's select that. Also, the IP address of the software has to match that of the drive. We set our IP address switch of the drive earlier to 192.168.0.130, so let's make sure the software matches. Sure enough, as soon as we type in the correct address, Q Programmer detects our drive. It is indeed an ST10Q, we see our firmware revision, and it's monitoring the I.O. Let's press the button and see what happens. There it is. X5 is lit up, meaning the input is low when I hold the switch down. When I let go, it opens up. Let's go ahead and write a simple Q program. When I press the switch, we're going to make the motor spin around one time. We'll start on line 1 of segment 1. The command I need is a wait for input. That'll be on the I.O. tab. Here it is, digital input frame. Wait for input. I'll need to give it some parameters. It needs to know what input to look for and what condition it'll be in. Input X5 is where the switch is connected. And I want the condition to be low. That means we'll stay on this line until X5 goes low. For our next line, we're going to set a speed. Velocity is a motion parameter, so we'll be looking for it on the Motion tab. Here's Velocity, VE. I think I'd like my motor to run at about 5 revolutions per second. How far do I want it to go? Well, in Configurator, we set our motor for 20,000 steps per rev. If I want it to move one revolution, I need to give it a distance of 20,000. That's here under Parameters. DI is the command for distance. And I'll set my distance for 20,000 motor steps. Finally, we need to actually do a point-to-point -point move. 
That's a feed to length, FL. It doesn't need a parameter. After the move is done, I'd like the program to go back to line 1 and wait for the switch to be pressed again. That would be a Q program instruction, Q go to. And we want to go to line 1. There we go, we're ready to download our segment now to the drive. After it's downloaded, it will reside in the non-volatile memory of the drive for as long as we want it to remain there. Let's execute the program and make sure it works the way we expect. I'll press the Execute button, and here we are. Line 1 is lit up yellow, meaning the WI command is running. After I press the switch, it should pass very quickly through the velocity and distance commands and stay on FL for our one revolution move. Of course, if I hold the button down, it'll just keep moving over and over again. Thanks for joining us on our tour of the ST Ethernet Drive family. We hope it's been informative. For more information, please consult our website where you'll find manuals, software, and data sheets.